Hello, this is Diane Gayhart. And recently I have been getting a lot of questions about what exactly is in my program therapy that works, what theories are covered, how do all the parts come together? So I thought I would put together a chart that'll hopefully give you a good sense of, of all the moving pieces with this theory. And, and I know there are a lot of different theories because if you're tra trained more in traditional counseling or psychology, or you might use a lot of systemic or family therapy terms. If I use, if you're more used to family therapy, you're gonna, gonna throw in some theories from the counseling psychology world. The honest to God truth is we need them all. Um, so, um, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through this to just give you a sense theoretically of what is going on in the approach that I call therapy that works. So there are seven modules in the program. And the first one really is about the self of the therapist. And, and so, and there's so much research here um, just in terms of who the therapist is, who the counselor is and how that affects outcome. And um, more specifically, there's a lot of research that shows that our own ability to take care of our own mental health and relationship issues is highly correlated with our effectiveness. And so to even start talking about how to do therapy or counseling effectively without really inviting you to do some kind of deep, you know, deep cleaning or digging down in there and, and looking what part of your life could you work and improve on. And a big component of this is um, understanding how to set goals and, and to know the interventions, the steps, the techniques, the tricks to be effective at whatever you do. And strangely enough, most this is like not in most of our mental health, psychotherapy and counseling theories. I don't know why we, we talk about treatment planning, but we do not train ourselves enough on how to actually achieve, set and achieve goals. Even though we talk about goals all the time, they're just the basics of motivation, you know, research that we have, positive psychology research, just how to set and achieve a goal. We do not talk enough about that. So we're, I'm going to go into some of that research um, you know, in this first module. And of course, we're drawing very heavily on the humanistic approaches that really emphasize that who you are as a clinician is central to whether or not you're effective. And of course, the common research, um, the common factors uh, really emphasize this as well. So this first module draws on a lot of the research that shows that 30 to 40 percent of outcome um, is related to who we are as a clinician. Even more specifically, if you are depressed or anxious and you're not dealing with it, that your effectiveness is going to be 30 to 40 percent less than your colleagues who deal with their own mental health better. So this really is important. It may seem boring, um, but I hope you will, you know, you will find something that you want to work on, on on yourself. And most importantly, learning that those, you know, psychology, psychology principles about how to set and achieve goals, very important for you. And also to help your clients know how to set and achieve their own goals. Um, in the second module, we're going to talk about connecting. And I, I'm going to try to teach you um, in the most simple terms possible, how to talk to clients in a way where you just immediately connect, where they, they feel very safe, not judged by you, but where you're talking in such a way that immediately you are opening the door for change. And for some clients, this way of connecting is all you're going to need. And this draws very heavily from like collaborative narrative solution focused postmodern approaches as well as intersubjectivity theory, which is a newer um, psychodynamic approach. And we'll use some of the elements in emotionally focused couples therapy, but also looking at um, research from common factors. And I'll tell you, one of the secrets to making all of this work comes out of mindfulness and Buddhist psychology, um, kind of a way to understand reality in a, in a very particular way that really helps to connect in a way that allows clients to quickly and easily transform. And I actually will introduce some concepts out of the Myers-Briggs, not the 16 personality types, but just some of the cognitive functioning types to really help you quickly track uh, how your clients' minds work and how they make meaning so you really know how to reach them. 
You know, arguably, I mean, I don't know, they're all very important mo modules, but arguably module three in assessing is probably the most unique in this approach. And I am going to introduce to you this, it's super simple in one level, it does have four different levels, but it's one simple, quick way to get at the heart of your client's underlying dynamics of what's going on. So. I mean, I'm not even talking DSM-5 assessment. I'm assuming many of you have already gotten good at that. That's not an issue, but this is getting to the heart of the dynamic you need to focus on. And when you can laser focus in on this in the first couple of sessions, what you need to do, how to intervene comes becomes really, really clear. And this, um, this assessment intervention is something I've developed. I've never published it anywhere before. Um, so I'm real excited about teaching this, but it, it, it's built on systemic. It has lots of layers of cognitive behavioral. It has layers of narrative therapy, and it even integrates really, I, I think, elegantly onto all of this, just social justice issues that can work seamlessly with all the others. And of course, it's, it is drawing on object relations, emotionally focused therapy, and dialogue uh, DBT principles as well. So there is a lot in this model. And I am really excited about it. And I'm going to make sure in this program therapy that works that you are going to learn how to do this. Because once you can do this, you're, everything becomes so much clearer what you actually need to be doing. And of course, um, we're going to draw on some research into this um, assessment module as well. So there is just a lot going on here in terms of how to understand, you know, and, and I think one of the unique pieces too that's in this is I will also be talking about just understanding quote unquote personality disorders. I think it's a horrible term. I think it, it does not a helpful concept. So I'm gonna to introduce to you hopefully a better way to think about um, what I would say is just very rigid <laughs> behavioral patterns in terms of quote unquote personality disorders and what to do with those. Cause that is, I, I think one of the real missing pieces that most clinicians today still don't get, even though people talk a lot about it, you know, in the media. Um, next, we're gonna learn about treatment planning and really understanding what the evidence says, what works for what issues, which populations, when you can use your favorite theory of choice, and when do you really probably need to use one of the evidence-based treatments and to give you a super clear, you know, um, roadmap for how to do treatment planning, how to use which theory when, and um, so this would hopefully add a lot of clarity about how to work. And actually with clients, when you can describe what the research says works for them and these certain issues, it re you can just see the relief on their face. You're like, oh my God, someone knows what to do and how to help me. This is just great. So you will really love that treatment planning module and your clients will love it as well. In terms of the intervening module, I'm going to go over some of the uh, most useful approach uh, interventions that you'll need to treat 95% of your outpatient clients, including individuals, couples, and families. And you will certainly leave with a very solid set of tools. You can also get creative in this approach. You can bring in all of your theory of choice and certain interventions that you may like. Um, but you will have a very solid foundation to do what you need to do for 95% of working with your outpatient clients. Um, and then in module six, it's really kind of intervening continued, um, but it's really focusing on solidifying gains using strength-based approaches, namely solution-focused and narrative to regardless of how else you may be thinking of things, um, how to solidify gains long-term with your clients using these two approaches, which of course you can use these ideas throughout therapy, but I think they have a particular utility at the end of treatment. And the last module just um, covers income building and looking at your various avenues and options for making money in the field of mental health. And you actually have lots of choices, lots of options. And so I try to lay those out for you to think about what might be the best strategy and best options for you. So I hope this brief introduction to um, therapy that works and the various ways that I'm pulling together traditional theories, evidence-based treatments, as well as research foundations into a very simple, singular, coherent model um, is a little bit clearer. So please post any questions you have down below. Thanks for listening.